In the world of myth, where the rivers sparkle with magic, lived Barunda. Barunda was no ordinary bird. It had two heads, a marvel of nature. They shared one body, two magnificent necks rising from a body covered in shining feathers. Ah, this serene lake in the Himalayas, surrounded by trees heavy with exotic fruits and the air buzzing with life. This is my domain, a paradise untouched by time. Each morning Barunda would spread its wings and greet the sun. It soared above the lake, its reflection shimmering in the water below. Back on its perch, the two heads, each with its own mind, would share the stories of the sky. Life was simple, a rhythm of sunrise and sunset. Barunda, the strange, beautiful creature, was at peace, or so it seemed, for the two heads carried a secret, a truth that would test the limits of their shared existence. The left head, let's call him Surya, was adventurous and bold. He yearned to explore the world beyond the lake. Surya was impulsive, driven by curiosity. He saw the world with a thirst for the unknown. I, on the other hand, find solace in the familiar. I am patient, a thinker who observes the world with wisdom. I am content with the peace our lake offers. Their differences were not a problem at first. They learned to coexist, their lives intertwined. They shared the spoils of the hunt, the warmth of the sun, the stories of the sky. They flew as one, each head taking turns to guide their shared body. They learned to compromise, to find balance in their differences. But deep down, a silent tension brewed. The seeds of discord were sown. The differences that made them unique also set them on a collision course. One day, a new scent wafted across the lake. It was sweet and intoxicating, a fragrance unlike anything we had experienced. It came from a lone tree, its branches laden with golden apples. We must taste this fruit, I urged Chandra. Imagine the stories it holds, the secrets it whispers. We know nothing of this fruit, brother, I cautioned. It could be dangerous. Remember, curiosity can lead to ruin. Don't be such a coward, Chandra. Fortune favors the bold. We must seize this opportunity. Imagine the taste, the delight. Patience, Surya. We have all we need here. Why risk our peace for the unknown? Their debate raged, each head refusing to back down. They circled the tree, desire and doubt battling within their shared heart. The golden apple so tempting became a symbol of their growing discord. Unable to reach a consensus, Surya decided to act on his own. He saw an opportunity while Chandra was lost in thought. Just a nibble, he thought, to taste the allure. With a swift movement, Surya snapped at the golden apple. He swallowed it in one gulp, ignoring Chandra's startled cry. The taste was unlike anything they had experienced before. It was intoxicating, addictive, but the sweetness was short-lived. A burning sensation spread through their shared body. Surya, in his haste, had not considered the consequences. The apple was poisonous. Chandra watched in horror as Surya choked, his vision blurring. You fool, he cried, his own body racked with the shared agony. Why didn't you listen? Surya, his voice weak, could only manage a whisper. Forgive me, brother. The poison worked quickly. Surya's eyes glazed over, his head falling limp. Chandra, now the sole inhabitant of their shared body, was left to deal with the consequences of Surya's actions. He felt the life draining from them, the poison coursing through their veins. He cursed Surya's recklessness. Look at what you have done. We are doomed because of your selfishness. But his cries were met with silence. Surya was gone. Fear gripped him. He had always feared the unknown, and now he was facing the ultimate unknown, death. And he was facing it alone, he longed for Surya, for their arguments, their shared flights, their life together. Despite their differences, they were two halves of the same whole. Now one half was gone and the other was fading fast. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the lake, Chandra closed his eyes. He realized the futility of anger. They were two parts of the same being. Surya's fate was his fate. Barunda, the magnificent two-headed bird, lay lifeless by the lake. The golden apple, still clutched in Surya's beak, served as a grim reminder of their fate. The lake, once their playground, now reflected their tragedy. The story of Barunda serves as a powerful parable. It reminds us that we are all interconnected. Our actions, however small, have consequences. Just like Barunda's two heads, we may have different perspectives, different desires. But we must learn to find balance to embrace cooperation over conflict.
for within each of us lies the capacity for both Surya's recklessness and Chandra's wisdom. The key to a fulfilling life lies in recognizing this duality, in understanding that we are stronger together, weaker apart. The ripples of Barunda's tragic tale continue to spread across the water, reminding us of the enduring power of unity and the devastating consequences of discord. Please like and subscribe more videos. Thank you.